class, I wanted to take a minute to go over some of the viruses. So what we have here is, this is the basic structure for what is known as a naked or non-enveloped icosahedral virus. What you're going to see is you have the protein coat, which is known as the capsid, and the nucleic acid. The green areas signify the spikes, the viral spikes. Those are used for attachment, so they will attach into a host cell receptor. The other type of icosahedral that we have is right here. And this is called an enveloped icosahedral. So what you see is the same basic capsid shape. You have the protein capsid with the nucleic acid on side. But then what you have is this outer membrane, all right, with the spikes attached to it. This outer envelope comes from the previous host. So if you look at the steps of viral replication for an animal virus, the last step is release, and it shows a picture in the book of it going through budding or exocytosis. This is from the host. All right, so those are two of the icosahedral. So the icosahedral, you have the envelope version or the naked, naked or what's known as the non-envelope version. The next viral example that we're going to look at are the helical viruses. Now, the helical viruses, or an example of them, would be Ebola. All right. So I only drew part of it out. What you have here is the nucleic acid, and then the protein coats line up all around them. Okay. So you would have proteins all throughout. Then what happens is that when it's time to replicate, you're going to replicate only in the nucleic acids. So here you have the nucleic acid. And then here you have all the proteins. So it's a much different setup than having the outer coating that you have here for the animal viruses. Now over here, what we have is what is referred to as the complex shape or the bacteriophage. Now, the bacteriophage is a bacteria which infects bacteria. It's a virus that infects bacteria, rather. So what you have is the basic capsid shape with the nucleic acid. And then it gets different. So this part right here, your capsid region, is the same as everywhere else. You have the protein, you have the nucleic acid. Here's where it's different. Okay, you have a collar, then you have a sheath. The sheath is spring-like, so it can bounce up and down. You have the tail fibers, and then what you have is the pins or the spikes, which are going to go through the bacteria. And then what's going to happen is the bacteriophage, it needs to penetrate to inject its nucleic acid. All right, so you'll have all the nucleic acid comes in, and then what ends up happening is once the nucleic acid has come through, it's no longer in here. This is just protein and whatnot. This will end up being absorbed and broken down and used by the environment. All right, it's a one-way system. Once the nucleic acid has been penetrated into the bacteria, it can't come back up in here and reform and have a virus again. So now this is inert. It cannot harm another bacteria. What you'll see is that if you look for the bacteriophages, it talks about how when they leave the bacteria, they basically blow the cell wall of the bacteria to bits, and you'll end up releasing a whole bunch of bacteriophages out through here. All right, so let's review real quick. We have three basic shapes, dicosahedrals, of which you have naked and envelope, and then you have a complex shape, which is known as the bacteriophage, and then all the way on the other side, we have the helical shape, which is just the nucleic acid with the proteins all around it. So those are your basic viral shapes.